the September 20th edition of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee of the Metro Council. Uh, welcome you all to this meeting. Uh, we will begin uh, taking attendance very quickly. Pulley here, Allen here, Bradford here, Cash here. I don't see Gamble, Henderson, Hurt is here. Nash is here. I don't see O'Connell, Roten, or Swope, and Young is here. Uh, if that's incorrect, say so. Otherwise, we'll begin. We will start with a consent agenda for the resolutions. We only have four resolutions on the agenda. Uh, RS 2022-1776 and 1777 I have on consent, unless anybody wants to pull them. If so, say so. Otherwise, I'll go down the consent in the docket. Okay, I will uh, begin. RS 2022-1776, Johnson and others sponsors approves a project modification to an agreement between the Metro government and the United States Department of Army to add three parcels related to the acquisition and removal of flood prone properties in the Seven Mile Creek watersheds. R2022-1777 Welch and others sponsors uh, approves a project modification to an agreement between the Metro government and the United States Department of Army to replace four parcels related to the acquisition and removal of flood prone properties in the Mill Creek, Sorghum Branch and Whittemore Branch watersheds. Anybody need to pull any, either of those two off consent? Uh, okay, uh, I'll take a motion to approve the consent agenda. Uh, moved and properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Consent agenda is approved. Now we'll move to RS 2022-1778, Gamble and others sponsors. Appropriates $42,405 through a grant contract between the Metro Department of Water and Sewage sewerage services and the Tennessee Environmental Council to provide trash and debris removal around Nashville's waterway. Do I have a motion? Yes. Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? Councilmember Henderson. Chair, I just have a question generally. I think council members have uh, received some outreach maybe from the Tennessee Environmental Council about um, potentially scheduling um, creek uh, related trash and debris cleanups. Is that associated with this grant funding? Um, I had responded to that email and not heard back yet and I just didn't know if these were associated initiatives. Do we have somebody could speak to that? Could you come to the podium? <clears throat> and just tell us who you are and uh, see what you can do to address Councilmember Henderson's question. Thank you very much. Yes, Rebecca Doan, Metro Water Services. Um, Councilmember Henderson, they are associated with this cleanup. We just wanted to make sure that the grant contract was actually approved before they started work on the specifics of it. I appreciate that. And then I see also here for Cumberland River Compact, and I know often these organizations work in partnership, but would the the pool of associated money be, I, I guess what I'm wanting to know is kind of how much will there be <clears throat> for this work to be spread over, you know, 35-ish council districts, will it be this 42-4 plus this 66-2? That is correct. Okay, so roughly $100,000 that we're working yes. with for um, neighborhood river creek associated cleanups. Correct. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member Henderson. Anybody else, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, we recommend approval. Uh, moving on, RS 2022-1779, Gamble and others sponsors, appropriate $66,275 through a grant contract between Metro Department of Water and Sewerage Services and the Cumberland River Compact to provide trash and debris removal around Nashville waterways. Have a motion? Uh, moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Uh, we recommend approval. Now we'll move the bills on second reading and we have a fairly large consent agenda. I will go through these by bill number one by one and uh, feel free to note at any time if you wanna pull any of these off consent. Uh, item number seven, BL 1416. Item number eight, 1417. Item number nine, 1418. Item number 10, 1419. 
Item number 11, 1420. Item number 12, 1421. Item number 13, 1422. Item number 14, 1423. Item number 15, 1424. Item number 16, 1425. Item number 17, 1426. Item number 18, 1427. Item number 19, 1428. Item number 20, 1429. Item number 21, 1430. Item number 22, 1431. And that is all I have on consent. Does anyone uh, wish to pull anything off of that agenda, uh, the consent agenda at this time? Okay, I will go through the captions, if you will just bear with me. Uh, number seven, BL 2022-1416 authorizes McGavick Apartment Venture LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located 1212 McGavick Street. Uh, BL 1417 authorizes Metro government to abandon existing stormwater drainage easement rights for property located at 30 Peabody Street. Item number eight, nine, uh, BL 221418 authorizes Metro government to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes and easements, and to relocate a fire hydrant assembly for three properties located at 2135 and 2141 Waterside Drive and 2200 Bowline Avenue, also known as the landings at River North. Uh, BL 1419 authorizes Metro government to abandon existing public sanitary sewer main and easements and to accept new sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assembly and easements for the property located at 2714011 in Pike, also known as Donaldson Library. BL 22-1420 authorizes Metro government to abandon existing sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manhole and easements and to accept new sanitary, sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manhole and easements for property located at 6 84 Myatt Drive, also known as 698 Myatt Drive Phase 3. Uh, BL 2022 1421 authorizes Metro government to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for the property located at Old Hickory Boulevard, unnumbered, also known as Evergreen Hills Phase 2B. Uh, BL 2022 1422 authorizes Metro government to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for property located at 9917 Sam Donald Road in Williamson County, also known as Primrose School of Nolensville. BL 2022-1423 authorizes Metro government to abandon existing public water main to relocate a public fire hydrant assembly and to accept a new public water main and public fire hydrant assembly for property located at 18 1805 Church Street, also known as 19th and Church. Bill 2022-1424 authorizes Metro government to abandon existing public water main and easement, to relocate a public fire hydrant assembly, and to accept a new public water main and easement for property located at 2000 Church Street, also known as St. Thomas Midtown Surgery Expansion. Bill 2022-1425 authorizes Metro government to accept a relocation and vertical adjustment of existing water main for property located at 203 Osceola Avenue, number one. BL 2022-1426 authorizes Metro government to abandon existing public water main and to accept new public water main for property located at 5621B Lenox Avenue, also known as Lenox Avenue Townhomes. BL 2022-1427 authorizes Metro government to accept new sanitary, sanitary sewer main and sanitary sewer manhole for property located at 2007 23rd Avenue North, BL 2022-1428 authorizes Metro government to abandon existing water main to relocate a public file hybrid and assembly and to accept a new public water main for property located at 3810 Gallatin Pike, also known as Studio 79 Apartments. Bill 2022-429 authorizes Metro government to accept the relocation of a fire hydrant assembly for property located at 5300 Centennial Boulevard. Bill 2022-1430 authorizes Metro government to abandon existing public utility easement rights for two properties located at 516C and 520B 
West Bend Drive, Bill 2022-1431, authorizes Metro government to accept the relocation of a fire hydrant assembly for property located at 824th Avenue North, also known as Ballpark Village. That is the consent agenda. Would anyone like to pull anything off? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to approve this consent agenda. Moved and properly seconded, all in favor? Any opposed? The consent agenda passes. Now we will go back to bills on second reading. Uh, I, agenda item number five, substitute BL 2022 1384 Rosenberg and others sponsors, amends the Metro code relative to traffic, cal traffic calming projects. Uh, do I have a motion? Moved and properly seconded. <clears throat> Council member Rosenberg, I'll go to you as the lead sponsor. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like I to always enjoy muting you if I get that opportunity. I, I know. I noticed you did not move quickly to turn the mic on. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, I'd like to ask for a motion on the amendment, please. It's just uh, some grammatical fixes. Uh, could somebody move the amendment? Uh, amendment is moved and properly seconded. Uh, back to you on the amendment, Councilman Rosenberg. Three grammatical fixes is all. All right, uh, Councilman O'Connell, did you want, you rose your hand for, okay, okay. Councilman Young. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Councilman Rosenberg, you are a, a uh, trying to <laughs> think of an appropriate term to use in public. You're very, you're very consistent about the use of proper grammar. So how can you, how can you allow a bill to be filed with your name on it with some grammar mistakes? I, I must know. I, it makes me concerned about the overall intent and the worthiness of this legislation. Move to combine District 10 with District 11, please. <laughs> I'll and second eliminate that. The, uh, uh, the District 10 council member. Is that what the intent here? Okay. <laughs> well, that's what you're fixing now, isn't it? The gram grammatical errors. It is. Okay. Uh, it, it, it really allowed it to be filed, so I could make the point that it's important to fix grammatical mistakes. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> council member Cash. Uh, I just want to say I am, in, as a 25-year English teacher, f in fully in support of, of fixing grammatical mistakes. And I will uh, let you know that writing is a process. So it, it, for Councilman Rosenberg to come along and now fix these is, is great in my book. I understand that completely. <laughs> Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, uh, all in favor of the amendment? Any any opposed? Amendment passes. Councilman Rosenberg, back to you. Bill, back to you on the bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know we discussed it a little bit last week. I don't know if there are additional questions. I'll just say again that it really it does three things. It codifies traffic calming. It ensures it's distributed throughout the county, and it creates a process for private funding of traffic calming uh, projects. And I would ask for your approval. Okay. I think we have to move the bill as amended. Is that? Uh, all right, so moved and properly seconded. Any other discussion? Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just want to make sure, I, I believe this was the case with the bill as substituted, but am I correct? Uh, I'm happy to ask the sponsor of the department. NDOT is, is supportive of the bill at this point, is that correct? Councilman Rosenberg. Yes, they are. They helped draft it. Great, thank you. That's, that's my only question, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Henderson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I want to express appreciation to Councilman Rosenberg because I think um, we all as district council members are starting to feel with the improvements over the years to the traffic calming program, the queue has now gotten very deep um, because the program has become more effective. We actually have vertical measures like speed cushions that we never had for many years. Um, and I think um, that has resulted in a fair amount of frustration, right? Um, because people waited for the program to get better, then they got in the queue and now they're, you know, 100 deep. So I, I appreciate you um, uh, bringing this um, to address uh, this in part. I guess as a district that has um, kind of a confusing combination of HOAs, private streets, private streets that are adopted for public maintenance, private streets that aren't adopted for public maintenance, 
Um, I didn't know if NDOT, um, as far as um, their kind of thoughts on that, that this is only, their engagement is only on streets adopted for public maintenance, but has anybody kind of thought through how that works, whether that's sponsor or department, um, you know, with those HOAs that have the capacity to potentially raise these funds, I'm just interested in knowing what is the typical cost of a traffic calming project? And so who are those groups that could raise, say, you know, $30,000, et cetera, to be able to implement these programs? I appreciate that we might need a mechanism for it, but I just wanted to kind of address the cost issues and where we anticipate this would typically be done because on a typical kind of metro street um, that's outside of the context of an HOA, um, I'm interested to understand what that fundraising funding mechanism would look like because to whom would the citizen give the money and how would that be organized? Because in the context of HOA, people pay dues, they have a bank account, like I'd see how that would work. Um, but I just know my district is a real patchwork of HOA, non-HOA, public, not public. And so I just wonder um, the practical delivery aspects of the, the as intended, please. I don't see any value from NDOT here. Uh, is that a question for the sponsor or the administration? Or Good evening, um, I'm Mary Peoples. I just left NDOT and uh, I wanted to let you know that Director Alarcon is in the building and she will be able to address the uh, questions that every each one of you has about this particular bill. All Since right. she's in the building, so. Okay, well we will, if you, if there's any way you can reach out to her and get her here, we've, we've got. I, I just got the off the phone with her and, and she is on and, her way. Okay, um, good. Okay, I just well, wanted to let you know, I can't answer for the department, but I did want to let you know okay. she was coming. Thank you. Thank Councilman you. Roseberg, you want to address that? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, probably not as comprehensively as, as, director, as the director can. Um, I have the same mix of streets as council member Henderson, um, really, this initial bill was more about the um, distribution of traffic calming. There was an instance on the other side of, of, of the county, um, hundreds of miles away from mine, where there was a developer who wanted to put in uh, traffic calming measures and they were denied that opportunity. So this is really um, created with the intent of, of allowing that sort of thing to happen. The, private entity would be tasked with paying for the entire process besides the petitioning. So I think that, and they would of course have to use a preferred vendor. So whatever entity is collecting that would, it, they would not be using Metro as, um, a, as a recipient of the money. Um, but I can't speak to the more specific uh, way that that money is collected. Thank you for that. Council Member Henderson, you got anything further? I mean, I think um, I, I absolutely appreciate that we want to get us to a place where we can have um, developers um, as part of improved kind of traffic impact. Um, you know, often we say like, oh, well, you've got to put a, you know, mast arm intersection in here, but we don't necessarily have, you know, associated traffic calming. So I, I would like to see us doing that absolutely from the development community. But I, I think I would like to understand just as a practical matter, um, what citizens, because you know, I've had citizens asking me for a while now, like, can we just get some money together and do this ourselves? Um, and um, you know, I have responded with a lot of empathy, but said no. Um, and so, um, I just, I just want to, um, I'm, I'm. I just want to understand the practical implications of how that would um, work um, because I, I have a bit of a equity concern in that I can see some of my constituents being able to kind of organize that, um, but in the context of say an HOA with publicly maintained streets, 
Um, but then I can see folks just one street over awkwardly who consider themselves a subdivision but were formed maybe earlier and they don't have an HOA and they might not be able to do the same and because streets are a network and they're all interrelated. I mean, I certainly appreciate, and Councilman Rosenberg has uh, put that in his uh, substitute and amendment, um, how the department would evaluate it, right? So we're not gonna have people doing one-offs and I greatly appreciate that. Um, would you like the, we yes, can get the director up? He's uh, here, yes. And Councilmember Henderson has a question for you, Director Alcon. <laughs> Hi, oh sorry. No. <laughs> Deep breath, it's okay. Deep breath. <laughs> I, I, I know that okay, feeling. Okay, how may I help y'all? Especially during the pandemic. I run up the stairs, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I am out of shape. Okay, <laughs> all good. Um, my question was about kind of just the, the practical implications and implementation of um, the variety of communities that could, so Councilman Rosenberg, point well made, the development community is part of associated development, being able to you know privately fund 100%, yay, all for it. Um, but uh, communities, so you know, they're all organized somewhat differently. Some have yes. HOAs, some don't have HOAs. Some have streets adopted for public maintenance, some don't. And so I'm a little bit worried about kind of the mechanism. So in an HOA with streets adopted for public maintenance, I could see how that could work, right? Give the money to the HOA, whatever. But if you live one community over, um, your streets are still public, but you don't have an organized HOA. How are you gonna, uh, just the practical funding piece, please. Oh, sure, thank you very much for that question, Council Member. My apologies, my apologies for being tardy. I'm running from meeting to meeting. But, um, so right now, um, anyone can put in for a traffic calming request. So if it's a homeowners association, they can. If it's an individual on just a street that wants traffic calming, they can submitted and once we get that in, um, application that's submitted we will re actually review it um, to under make sure it's complete and then work with that individual and then we will go through the process of um, properly I want to say um, ranking it based on the criteria that have been established um, depending on how they are ranked um, um, will determine whether they will make the list as you're aware we we would love to fund everything that everyone asked for but we only have a certain amount of money that allows for us to do it. So they'll get ranked accordingly. We do this every single time we put the new program out. Um, and then once we do that, let's just say uh, an individual, it's not a homeowners association, but maybe two folks on that street want to have some traffic calming. So they work together and they put an application in. We would get it, we would go through the ranking process of all the applications. Let's say it just so happens that that street did get ranked, that they qualified for the next 25 um, applications next 25 um, communities that are chosen for the traffic calming. We would then go through the process of evaluation, starting the community conversation with everyone that's involved on the street. So even though one or two people may apply for it, it wouldn't make a difference. Once it qualifies, everyone's gonna be involved in the conversation. And that is the folks that would actually then be voting based on the ballot to move forward. Now, let's say we have a homeowner association and we would pay for that, that's already built into our program. But let's say you have a homeowner association that does have the funding and they would like to move it forward. The amendment allows for them to do it as long as it, based on those qualifications that we actually put in the amendment and worked with the council member Rosenberg on establishing. So we would be able to do that and it's actually on their dime. We'll review it based on the consultant providing us with the information and then sign off on it and they're able to move forward. So it's not taken away from resources that we would need for the other program program would be able to move both of them together simultaneously. Does that address your question? Councilman Henderson? Can I just ask a clarifying question then? So it, it has to, I, I mean, I think the concern that's trying to be addressed is that the queue is so deep, it's so hard to get to the top 25 now based on, and we did, colleagues, you know, those of you who are here second term, I mean, we did bring traffic calming back in house. We funded an operational budget two positions for it. We vastly increased the bucket and had a dedicated bucket for traffic calming, Correct. which we didn't used to have. Traffic calming, bikeways, everything used to be all wrapped up in a big paving bucket. So, I mean, there is more kind of program programmatic intention now with that, but because the queue is so deep, 
So if you go through the process, it's, you know, it has merit, you know, you you do the, the study and all that. Is the thought that, okay, well, you're at 100 and because you can pay for it yourself, you get to go to the front of the line? Or is it that you are going to manage a separate bucket of self-funded intent? Like, is there gonna be a check on the application? We have capacity and intent to self-fund and then that moves in a separate, um, that works in a separate bucket, because it's one thing for a few neighbors to think that they can get their fellow neighbors to pitch in $12,000, $20,000 to do something like this, and it's quite another for them to practically, so again, I respect and appreciate an HOA, right, with a certain budget, like they can do that, but I, I worry a little bit that we're kind of opening a door here that um, in an effort to diminish frustration and deliver things faster is just complicating things for you all and creating kind of different pathways. Um, so, um, no ma'am, it does not. We actually, the way we worked with Councilmember Rosenberg on that is that they would have to hire an engineer that would do all the engineering work established based on the criteria that's set up for the traffic calming program. If they meet all of those criteria and it checks off, then they're eligible and can move forward with paying for that traffic calming on their own dime. They have to hire an inspection um, contractor to inspect it to make sure that it's meeting our criteria and our requirements, which is all laid out in that, that language, and then they'll pay for it and move forward and we just do final inspection. It does not take away from the current program at all. So yes, if let's say they were 105 on the list and they decide they wanna pay for it, I look at it as a public-private opportunity where private dollars are paying for a public improvement. And so then they would come on off the list, the application would come out, and then that would allow for us to shorten up the list and get more done. But it's not gonna take away from the current program and what we're trying to do at all. Okay, I appreciate that. I think just the communication around it's gonna have to be really clear okay. as well. I would encourage to the extent that you all have added some kind of photographs and other information to your standard material so people understand, you know, speed cushions or not speed humps, all that yeah. level of detail. I think you're going to have to kind of create a few hypothetical scenarios to put on the website so that people do not get overly um, uh, excited about, oh, we can do this ourselves, and then realize, oh, this costs $50,000 and we don't have the capacity to do it. Right. Okay. No, we definitely will. Okay. Thank you Thank for you. that. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Allen, you had your hand up. You want to be recognized? I, I think I was going to say the same thing that perhaps Council Member Cash is raising his hand for is, I, I think it is not uncommon in uh, in a rezoning process for neighbors to be, to have legitimate concerns about cut through traffic and things like that, that will often spawn a conversation um, about traffic calming, and I, and I think that is the most likely scenario that we will see on the front end. So I'm, I'm glad to know that the thought, all the thought that's gone into the process for dealing with, with both of those, um, because I mean, to me, anything we can do to get another group off the list and move other people up seems like um, a, a good way to get traffic calming everywhere that people are asking for it, which is all over the county. Thank you for that, Councilmember Cash. Thanks. It, uh, my questions are kind of similar. So, let me make sure I understand. So, currently, we have a, a policy that says that that private groups like HOAs can't just uh, pay for their own traffic calming, right? That's a, like a that's it's a department policy that states that. Is that correct? So, uh, I don't. So what, what they we, can't do it now. Why is that? Well, because right now the way it's set up is actually they're looking for they're willing to pay for it themselves, but that we still have to do all the resource work behind it, and that takes away from the line. I got you. So the way this new legislation is drafted is we're turning that full responsibility over to them. They have to hire the engineer. The engineer puts together the plans. They do their own community meetings. So I'm not taking away from the current program that we've identified. I got you. They're doing all the work. So so currently, if they could, currently under policy, they could pay for the cushions themselves. They're just not in the habit or practice of paying for the engineers and... Correct. Okay. And the community so, engagement and all of that, sir. I guess I guess what the, the point I want to make is, uh, and maybe uh, I need Director Darby to chime in on this. So right now, a de like Council Member Allen pointed out, a developer can come to us, want a zoning change, we could do an SP, 
Council Member Allen did one um, off, like on Murphy Road last term that got some traffic calming. Uh, Council Member Sledge has done one this, this term that has done, gotten some traffic calming. So it, private developers are paying for these traffic calming projects. Um, and so I'm not sure that I feel like it's fair that these developers can go through this process, but that uh, neighborhood associations can't. And I guess my question is, why, uh, let me make sure I understand, why is that, hap why can developers do this and uh, HOAs can't? Is it because we're going through an SP process, we're codifying these traffic calming things and it, that supersedes department policy, is that? why we're able to get tra private traffic calming that way. That, that is why you would be able to do it going through that, um, that avenue. Okay. Um, so I, I'm in support of this. I mean, we, we're already doing it. Developers are able to do it. Neighborhoods should be able to do it too. Um, and I guess another question is, and I got a little nervous when Council Member Henderson talked about like this, we can pay for it ourselves being on the checklist. I'd kind of rather it go through the process and if they're turned down, then they kind of go through a different process and, and, and let people know that they can pay for it or let the department know they can pay for it. But so the, the bill before us asks, uh, or the bill before us is saying like if there's a council district that hasn't gotten projects for a while, um, that, that they need to be given some in the application process, that that needs to be taken into consideration. And so I guess my question is, if these, if, like if somebody in council member um, Rosenberg's district bill d goes through the private process, are they counted, is that counted as, oh, they've gotten something or is the math from, is the math in this bill just for the publicly funded traffic calming projects. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So it is based on the, the, the applications that are applied for. So we do not, if someone's looking to do it private, again, the way we've structured the legislation is there is this now this opportunity that puts all of the onus and responsibility on that um, organization to do it, and therefore they're not going through the public process to, to get it done. And so, however, if someone did go through the public process and they did not get ranked up in the top 25 of we're currently going to fund because that's the dollars that we have available, then they, and they make the choice of going out to the neighbor and said, hey, we, do we want to pay it themselves? They would be able then to do that and they would just come off the list, but they would not catapult over anybody else. It's just, like I said, I look at that as more as a public-private partnership where the, the they're paying for the funds versus it being paid for the public. They're doing all the work. The whole onus is on them. So we can stay focused on getting those 25 um, done and out the door. Thank you. So for clarity, what I heard, um, I think I heard out of this was whether or not they have an application in, if it's privately funded, it does not count against that district allocation of projects. Correct. Is that right? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Council Member Henderson? It won't cut your microphone on for some reason. I think you've used all your minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You have too many others. <laughs> Sorry about that. Go ahead. Thank you. So as substituted and amended, um, and I appreciate the, the work that Councilman Rosenberg did in concert with you, I think I had some initial concerns as originally drafted, and I just want to make sure that at present, this is, you know, about uh, standards for authorizing uh, privately funded projects, such that stuff you have here about 66% on a petition, um, I think that's appropriate for privately funded things, yeah. but I'm very wary of codifying that for the other uh, bucket of projects, and so I just wanna make sure we're making that distinction. As the 66% in the petition, that is only, and sponsor or, or Director Alarcon, coming under the heading of privately funded, um, because I have some concerns about codifying that more generally, because I think we've got to move to a place, whether through 
safe routes for schools or just, you know, your findings in the research. Like sometimes I think I would like us to move to a place where, um, you know, if, if it's a safety concern, if it's an engineering determination, we're just, we're putting it down on the ground and we're not doing the petitions. I know we're not there yet. I would like to see us move there in time, but I'm wary of codifying it. So there's two different programs okay. um, that this would fall under. So for example, under the traffic calming program, this is strictly driven by the neighborhoods or by individuals on streets. That is one bucket. And there is a requirement of two thirds of the folks that would be impacted to agree to that. We used to do that by a petition. Now we do that by a ballot. So we actually get everybody's information. We send them all information saying, hey, your street's been selected. Here's the design. Whether you, we've had these meetings, we would like your vote. And then they would be able to go in online, put the information in, and vote yes or no if they're in favor of moving forward on the traffic calming. That is strictly driven by the community. When we get to the conversation. And just to clarify, that's not being codified here. That is, that is the current program today but it's not codified I believe it is being codified as part of the program no I'm sorry it's not because we wanted to leave flexibility what we've learned thank, thank you. you what right. we've learned yes we took that out because we at when we had the conversation with Councilmember Rosenberg our concern was what we've been learning is we can keep is we keep improving how we're handling Agreed. the process it's iterative we're so we better. didn't want yeah. to okay. restrain ourselves from the right. opportunity improving moving forward that's all I need a clarification for thank you Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Henderson. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we are on the bill as amended. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill uh, is rec bill as amended recommended for approval. Now we have one final item on the agenda, and that's uh, item number six, BL 2022-1410. O'Connell and others sponsors amends the Metro Code to authorize the installation of interactive wayfinding kiosks within the public right of way, and authorizes the Metro Planning Department and the Metro Purchasing Agent to issue a proposal for wayfinding kiosks. Do I have a motion? Uh, moved and properly seconded. Councilman O'Connell, is your bill? Yes, it is, Sorry Mr. Chair. That. Thank you. And I'd like to actually move to the second meeting in October with a brief comment. Do you want to put the amendment on first? Uh, did we have an amendment? Oh, Councilmember Allen has an amendment. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll leave that to Councilmember Allen. Councilmember Allen, you want to put the amendment on before we defer it? I would like to, with the sponsor's blessing. Th what this amendment would do is simply to, uh, to state that, that it would not include video on the, um, on the wayfinding kiosk. And also there's a recital that just points out the, the benefit of having uh, signs that can be updated unlike the nice round ones that we have now that can't be updated. Um, I, so the reason for the deferral is we've still got some stakeholder work to do. I think in principle, I'm comfortable with it, Mr. Chair, but if, if I could ask if the sponsor would wait, we're, we're okay. probably gonna come back. I've even got a proposed substitute from the administration that I wanna work on before we come back to second reading, if that's okay. And if, 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 the, spon if the amendment sponsor wouldn't mind, we'll come back in a couple months and, or in a month and, and revisit. Okay. Uh, I'm good with that as long sure. as video Come, is part of that conversation. Keep it on the table awesome. and I'm happy to entertain video. Well, Thank you're you. on the committee. You, you no want video. to move to defer it? Uh, yes, please. I'd like to move to defer two meetings with a brief comment. Uh, second. second. Uh, motion to defer two meetings is properly seconded. Back to you, Councilman McConnell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to that point, we have gotten, um, I think, you know, anybody who has spent downtown, time downtown, um, in recent years has maybe seen these brown circular signs that were put up with good intent uh, several years ago, I think about a decade ago, in fact, um, and they are wayfinding signs. We've got a few other um, stationary kiosks that serve some of the same purpose, uh, and yet there's really no funding mechanism or kind of accountability for constantly refreshing and updating these kiosks. And so this is, this is really a way to start a conversation about how we may um, do something useful for people when they are on the street. And yes, I know we all, uh, so many of us these days have smartphones and other things, but it can be very helpful um, when you are wandering around a city. Other cities have very successful implementations 
of things that are a little more dynamic right there present. Um, we have gotten some good input from uh, stakeholders downtown, downtown partnership, uh, Convention Visitors Corporation, the mayor's office has helped and we've gotten some concerns from NDOT who are working through their um, Downtown Connect project right now. Want to give a little more space for stakeholders to come together and explore this, see how it fits in with that program, certainly accept other colleagues' concerns as well, and we'll revisit it in a couple meetings. Okay, thank you, Councilman O'Connell. Appreciate that. So we have a motion for a two-meeting deferral on the floor. Any further discussion on the motion for deferral? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We recommend a two-meeting deferral. Uh, that's all the agenda items. Has anyone got anything else they want to talk about before we leave? Councilmember Henderson. Thank you, Chair, for recognizing me. I just want to ask the administration, Director Allercon, um, regarding the uh, B-cycle or bike share um, procurement that we anticipate, um, what the timeline is for that. Um, I didn't know if we could be provided an update um, about moving the kiosks, um, unfortunately, out of parks. Um, timeline on that and the timeline on the procurement, please. Director Alicon, if you want to address that. We may uh, tag team if that's all right, Councilmember Anderson. Um, the Parks Department did not have uh, a current contract with B-Cycles, um, and that was a, a bit of a liability risk had anyone been injured, but they are committed to participation in the full-scale uh, RFP to enable uh, B-Cycles or whatever the winning uh, vendor is to participate countywide. There are, if I recall, there are 35 uh, B-Cycle stations in the county. There were nine in parks that were affected, I believe, Director. Alicon is doing her best to relocate those to um, accepting locations. In terms of the timeline for the RFP, I will defer to Director Alicon as to, her, as to when she expects that to be um, up and completed. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon. Um, we actually have had one meeting with all of the different departments, parks, health, police, everyone, <laughs> to bring us together to sort of talk about what we want the next um, um, procurement process to look like or the RFP to look like for uh, bike sharing program. Um, we have a commitment to get back together in October with a draft RFP based on those comments that we collected, so we're working on that now. Uh, once we get through that and we get a finalized RFP, which I'm hoping will be toward the end of October, beginning of November, we'll actually work with procurement to work on putting it out into the field so that we can actually have those proposals back before us in January to consider for selection and then go go through the procurement process and bringing it before council for awarding. And basically that does take three readings um, for the awarding. So my hope is that we would be through the process in March and that would give us uh, the month of both April, May and June to start the transition just in case our current operator is not the same. Um, so we wanted to make sure we had enough time to transition out. We are looking at expanding the B-cycle program or excuse me, the bike sharing program in the next round of the RFP understanding the 35 that we have is not near enough of what we should have in our city. So we are looking to expand it pretty dramatically. Um, and that will be part of the RFP process as well, just as an FYI. And then Chair, last question. Has the MOU been executed to sustain the program that we currently have in the intervening time? Because we're still talking about like almost a whole entire year. Here. Correct. So the, we do have an MOU, or actually we have a one-year contract with B-Cycle um, that is going through the final execution. So that everybody's acting in um, in the right intent. Um, that's why we're maintaining it. We are moving those out of um, the parks um, based on what Mike had shared with y'all. So we have identified um, the location of relocating all of them except for two. And um, one is moving over to Edgefield Library um, that we are doing and the other one we're actually in conversation about moving it into another downtown location so we feel pretty confident that we'll have all cycle all current uh, b-cycle locations set up and ready to go um, that'll keep them in play until we get the new RFP in place great thank you so much you're very welcome thank you Councilmember Henderson uh, Councilman O'Connell thank you mr. chair just to follow up on that I'm <clears throat> I'm still a little confused these 
The kiosks and the program were funded federally uh, back again uh, a little over a decade ago. And if, if I'm not mistaken, the contract was never actually with parks per se. Um, in fact, I believe the federal funding came through the Metro Public Health Department. And I'm a little confused about how uh, a liability about the kiosk, regardless of who the vendor is, is operating it would mean that the kiosks would have to be removed from parks property. I, I don't know if anyone can shed any light on that. So the original partnership was between B Cycle and the Downtown Partnership. B Cycle at the time was a nonprofit. They switched to for profit, becoming legally a separate entity. They, uh, the Downtown Partnership, uh, for various reasons, elected to withdraw from that partnership and it landed at Parks. If Parks is operating uh, or allowing the operation of a for profit vendor for B Cycles or whatever the facility is, and someone should be injured, Parks Department is. I think uh, subject to liability in that instance. There was an in incident reported by a district council member involving an injury to, uh, I believe, a six-year-old child. Fortunately, it was a minor injury, but I think that put the fear of God into the Parks Department about they have no uh, contractual protections, no indemnification, no insurance requirements whatsoever, and that was part of uh, their concern. <laughs> Councilman McConnell, that's any other? Councilman Allen. I appreciate all the all the information we've gotten here. My understanding is the one uh, the one location that will end up downtown is more than likely coming from Shelby Park, which is probably the most used location in the city. Is there is there any interim solution that will continue to have bikes there where the people actually want to ride them? or at least closer to Shelby Park. <laughs> um, actually, the one in Shelby Park is gonna be moved out into the public right away. So that one, it'll be very close to the park. It will not be in the park, but it'll be very close to the park. We had identified an area, but that, actually we found out that's still within the park boundaries, so we've identified another area. The one that we're moving downtown is coming from another site. Okay, it's not awesome. coming from Shelby Park. So somewhere on the way to Shelby Park, you'll be able to pick up a bike on, yes, your, on your way. Okay, well, I, I appreciate that, the, the work to find that solution. I think that's really important. You're very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Thank you, Director Alicon. Appreciate you being available for all these questions. And if we don't have anything further, we are officially adjourned. Thank you.